Lemon Amiga Premium. A Playside Video Review. Sit back and get to the show. To another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time we'll be checking out Alienator, published on the front cover of Amiga Fun Magazine on the 22nd of November 1991. with a full screen PAL image and some tremendous music as you can hear playing in the background and we'll just let that music play during this play guide because I think it's one of the best parts of the game and it certainly stands out for me. we have mysterious pink orbs floating around with what looks like human beings trapped inside them and you can see a planet and a huge monster and a woman in the background who's made out of pure energy and that was very captivating for me when I first played this game the woman seems to be grabbing out towards us and we have full boost on trying to blast out of the way and this woman reminded me of my teacher back in film school and her name was Louise and this was a spitting image of her at that time. See this game is called Alienator and we'll definitely find out why a bit later on and programmed by PS. Well we're not quite sure who programmed this game as we shall see later on. Apparently if you leave that title screen to roll you can press the H, the M or the E key to select the level and I'm not quite sure how that works but if you leave it alone and wait for the game to go all the way through, it gives us this demo mode where we can see our ship, it's a Viper, I wonder where they got that name from and it gives us some information and what we'll have to do in this game is to protect the inhabitants of this planet and the enemies will try to steal the inhabitants of the planet and we will have to defend them and you can see the teleport ship see gives us an animation as well standard flying sources will be attacking us and the shield strength is three and effect on the viper shield is 52 percent if that thing is attacking us straight head on but you can see it has no weapons so what that will do is pick up all of the friendlies so you really have to prioritize the flying sources above all of the other enemies in the game You 
can see carrying them they will take all the friendlies to the enemy base and then we'll change them into mutants which will then come and attack us and you don't really want mutants attacking us in this game you can see the star field moves as that thing moves slowly upwards and if you shoot the flying saucer then that's great but if you shoot the friendly of course just like defender it will die then happen is a mutant head will float around and that cannot be destroyed by any known means and then you'll have to avoid it as best as you can. So it's best to shoot the friendly rather than get this menacing devil head floating all around that level. See, it will fly directly towards our ship if we let it and more enemies will start pouring out of that enemy base which is flying above and landing saucers will attempt to land on the surface and detonate mines and they prefer to fly low apparently it's definitely worth watching this introduction to check out all of the enemies but by pressing that left mouse button we can head on in towards that game itself in Alienator this is unlike any other Defender clone if ever seen because this is 3D Defender and this has been played on an Amiga 1200 unexpanded because if you play this on an expanded 1200 it moves too quickly and also on an Amiga 3000 as well. You can see by flying upwards we can see the enemy ship and that will launch towards us those fighters which you can see will start to pile up on the counter in the bottom left corner. We have two ships to knock out and as long as we don't destroy our own ships which I don't think it's possible to do unless they are actually being picked up. Look at that. And then you'll have to destroy one or both of them and you can see we've already destroyed one of all of the ones that we need to protect. Once you've destroyed them all, then that's moved on to a new level where we'll get even more enemies and a fresh batch and a new type of enemy as well. So the game gradually introducing us to those enemies, some of those will fire towards us and the landing saucers and the flying saucers will try to capture, as you've seen already successfully, the things that we're supposed to defend. This game relies heavily on sound and you can hear a 360 degree view of the enemies, it's buzzing all around us and that's great to hear that every enemy will have its own sound effect and I think you also hear a sound effect when one of our friendlies is being picked up so you can rush over there and rescue that friendly. You can see that it makes life easier if we don't have one to rescue in that bottom corner because as the friendlies get used up it means the defense that you need to put up to guard those is narrowed it should hopefully mean that you don't have to fly around as much. <laughs> see me firing my laser wildly and that's simply a pinpoint because it doesn't give us a compass in this game so we can't tell which way we're flying unless we fire that laser on the radar which is in the middle of that screen so as you can see as we fire towards that enemy hopefully we can locate the enemy simply by firing on that radar and then we can see it so we can fire straight towards that that will then blow up after a few shots and we've got one last enemy, again pinpoint that on the radar by firing towards it 
and then we can fly up towards wherever it is and the ones that usually kill us are on a higher altitude than the ones that are trying to land from that flying saucer and there is a time limit so if you do delay for a million years I think that the enemy will pour out some more enemies so it's best to get on with that job then once we've cleared the wave we'll return directly into the middle of the screen and unlike normal defender it's easy to see all of our friendlies so we can instantly see if they're being attacked so we don't have to fly around in this game we can stay in the middle and unfortunately we'll have to chase around after the enemies sooner or later and you can see one enemy is circling above now our friendlies is that something that's going to deplete that stock well if you fly around and set that thing on from a distance then hopefully it's easy to shoot and hopefully we can turn around quickly and get to that other friendly you can see it's being raided At this point the enemies will start to fire back towards us so you can't take anything for granted you'll have to fire towards them if you don't want to get shot tried to be a bit more careful that time and it didn't work we still shot the friendly before we shot the enemy but that's not too bad because we're clearing away that right hand side of the radar which means we don't have to defend that sector from now on and if we do well in these games it will give us a friendly an extra friendly I think to defend for free not quite sure but that's my tactic get rid of a few early friendlies that makes life easier on the later levels when you can imagine the enemies are buzzing around us wildly <laughs> By holding down the right mouse button we can change our speed and we can keep up with any of the enemies and keep up with any of their missiles as well only just out of range so it's very difficult to turn and fire in this game you're better off strafing them one way or another another way is to shoot them as soon as they come out of the enemy and that's one way to do it because that means that they can't land and they can't pose any threat and you can do that but if you crash into the enemy spaceship at the very top of the level then you'll just die and it's great to see that enemy spaceship, that big hulking mass passing us as we spin around trying to find the enemies in the game and again if you see me firing wildly that is a locator and that helps me locate directly where we are you can see I'm flying above something and so we'll have to fly down very quickly decrease some height if we want to find out what that is <laughs> You see something's laid mines all over everywhere and there are now a new type of ship flying around so we'll have to be extra careful and we'll have to prioritize these landing pods hopefully and we'll have to prioritize the enemies you can see the shield power is only just in the green and we get a fresh batch of shield every time we complete a level but once that shield's gone it's gone and then once the shield's gone we'll lose a life you can see we have three lives at the moment and six friendlies to defend <laughs> I 
on the instrument panel you can see all of our statistics pitch roll and yaw is accurately represented you can see our altitude as well we're halfway up into space and the speed changes and the shield of course goes down as well the level well i think there's maybe 30 levels in the game i'm not quite sure we'll be getting to level 15 on this playthrough That's a new type of alien, and each of these craft will be different, and again they will have their own noises as well, which is fantastic because it means you can hear things and later on in the game it becomes very interesting but one of the downsides of the game is the game does take some time to warm up and novices will dive through the early levels and get bored and it's not until maybe level 11 when things start to really heat up so it will take maybe an hour to get that far so at certain stages I'll be speeding up this footage and then it doesn't take that long Reading the manual for this game, apparently you can press E for easy mode on the title screen, which starts us off on level 0, or you can press M for medium or H for hard. Never actually tried that, but apparently that skips out the levels to 10 or 20, and maybe that was supposed to be in the game, or maybe that's on the Amiga Fun version. I'm playing the WHD load at the moment, and for uh, 7 megahertz game yes if you play this on anything faster than that it will be too fast so you can tell that this is an Amiga 500 game it's very fast it's very fluid and it really has got everything going for it this was a free game on a magazine and I didn't get this particular issue of Amiga fun but I did get some issues because Amiga fun was great to get full priced licenseware games for free on the front cover Some enemies will lure us out into space and run away and that means that the landers have all the time in the world to land and if you stop chasing them they will turn around and fire missiles towards us so you can see that new enemy ships take much more firepower and they will take much more chasing after as well At this stage you can really hear the sound effects start to pick up as every single ship has its own and you can see that counter start to pile up now on the left. You can see six ships now, five ships now still to destroy and of course when you have 25 ships all piled up onto that region it's pretty difficult. Something with a parachute is apparently on the screen and so I'm going to find out what that is because that could be parachuting down to blow up one of our friendlies.
Once you get all the way up in altitude, you'll be forgiven for thinking that the big enemy spaceship is actually something that we're supposed to kill. It isn't, and it's indestructible. What we're actually going for is a rocket that's flying all around us. At this stage, it doesn't matter whether we collide with that rocket, we'll get all of the shield back on the next level, but it's pretty difficult to collide with this thing in the game, and most things tend to buzz around us. Speed up the footage a little bit over the next level and you can see another enemy variety type and you really have to be fast on that finger and really it doesn't give us any ammunition to worry about it doesn't give us any time limit to worry about it certainly doesn't overheat the guns either so you can hammer away on that fire button and either have auto fire if you really want auto fire but you can hammer away to your heart's content and not run out of bullets or overheat the gun which is fantastic it means we can hammer those guys all day long Anybody who remembers Sorcerer Attack by Jim Sachs might think that this is a 3D version of Sorcerer Attack and it really is surprising that all these stars and everything else is flowing around here in real time just as quick as Frontier Elite 2 with an all 60 on board and yet this is just for a 7 megahertz machine so this really has got nothing in the way of huge landscapes to maintain it's a flat landscape and all we're doing is flying around a quadrant of space and all of the enemies are flying around us but as a technical achievement hats off to the guys and really it really does warm up as the game goes on if one criticism i'd like to level at the game of course it's too easy and although our shield has run down Already, many times, it's still too easy to get through all of these levels. So find homing missiles as well and they make a particular noise you'll have to blow up those homers as quickly as possible and they do make life difficult but yet again we can't fly backwards all we'll have to do is to fly as quickly as possible and trying to evade them Some levels really do fly by very quickly and you can see that we're already, we've only got one more to find and so we're almost at level 8 already. We have no idea who coded this game but according to one website they credit the coder of the game to Volker Vierick, who coded the Settlers. I'm not quite sure, in fact I'm not sure at all if that is completely accurate, because PS was the coder, and Volker Vierick does not begin with the words PS. But, according to that website, that was possible, and the graphics that you saw capped on the introduction title screen Again, we've no idea who that was, but it could have been Christopher Werner, again from the Settlers. I very much doubt that that's a fact, but given this was a German game, 
released on the German Amiga Fun magazine, and it's copyright Germans, and it was created by Germans. It is a good guess that it would be coded at least by a German guy and the, the graphics as well. So we don't know anything about that, but we do know the music was called Scrub Scrub, and that was created by DJ Brain Crank, and he also created the game music for Crazy Sue and Crazy Sue Goes On. Again, free games with Amiga Fun magazine, as well as Escape from Thorken and Zepp, the Zeppelin games that we've seen already on our A to Z PD ripoffs. They were all given away free on the front cover of that magazine, along with this one. This footage was recorded specially for our 3D special series and it wasn't used for that series so it sat on the shelf for all of this time. It was recorded in January and June 2016, four years ago, so that's why the image quality is nowhere near as good. And I really don't want to play this again, but here it is. This is the furthest I got. I managed to get to level 15 and then I got bored. And so I've no idea how many levels the game has, but it's got at least 20 because you can skip to that level on hard mode. So if this is a completer's quest, then you might want to spend maybe two or three hours on this to complete this. And I have no idea what happens at the end because I don't think anybody's posted a long play of it either. In fact, if you ask anybody what Alienator is, they will have no idea. It's one of those classic 3D titles on the Amiga that nobody's heard of, nobody's played it, and yet it's got fantastic controls, fantastic graphics, fantastic sound effects, and immense playability. I've been playing Crisis recently, it's a game where you have to run up to things and shoot them and have really good accuracy with your mouse. Spin around on the spot whilst you're being attacked on all sides, and yes, being attacked on all sides with things leaping out of the jungle, it's more or less this game. Except for, of course, the saucers don't fire back towards us. So even at this stage, even speeding it with footage, the game's still holding our hand, and the enemies won't ram us intentionally. They have some AI, and look at that, we've just rammed into an enemy by mistake. That means, yet again, we're shooting at the wrong ship. Let's get back to those enemies, and they're now crowding the screen out, which is great to see, because it means we'll have to stay on our toes Prioritize those threats. Hope you can see that things start to get hectic, and with this speeded up footage you can see the enemy still swarming around us as we get rid of one, another one spawns from either the ship itself, the main mothership, or a rocket might be fired from one of these guys flying around us. And yes, I've speeded this footage up because it did take quite some time, but you can see something is landing parachute bombs, and so that's another enemy, let's dispatch that. And it's very fun when those enemies start to lob things towards us. We'll have to divert our way just to try and save those guys. But you can see three of those guys have been killed. And we've still got five of those guys to be saved. Yo, 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 yo,
This game really benefits from a good mouse, and if you have a 400 DPI mouse on the Amiga it's better than ball mouse which would make this game unplayable, and of course with a modern PC mouse you can adjust the DPI on those with a button on the top and also if you're playing this with an emulator. Little things starting to buzz around us aren't too much of a problem and as you clear those enemies out it appears that everything's nice and easy again because we have two enemies left and clearing up the stragglers is fun because you know that there isn't going to be too much of a threat from them so you can take your time and destroy them. It's a pity that there are no power-ups in this game, no dual guns or lasers anything like that, but what we do have is blasting action. Level 10 goes on for a while, so let's speed that footage up again. And you might not think that there are too many of these 3D shooters on the Amiga, but taking Elite and Elite 2 out of the picture, there was 3D Galax, which I'm not sure about, Tau Ceti 2, which again I'm not sure about, I haven't played it, and Aqua Ventura, which got a big fanfare when that was released, Astro Chase, which looks fantastic, I've never played it, Deep Space by Cygnosis, which was an immense game, like Warhead, where you're supposed to leave a space station and take on local space. Deep Space looks an immense game. Embryo, you might remember that. Epic, of course, another game with a massive fanfare and 3D, but that was very slow indeed, if I remember. And Guardian, Guardian AGA, we've reviewed that already. Definitely check out Guardian, because that is the nearest thing to this game and the massive mothership in the middle of it is almost identical. Guardian came along long after this game, this was a 1991 release when 3D wasn't at all popular on any platform. So ahead of its time this really was. And so Guardian, if you can check out the Guardian on an Amiga 1200 or a CD32, it's definitely the best game on the CD32 as far as I know and that has all of the same defender features as this, only it's on a bigger landscape. Other 3D games, other 3D shooters, well there was Interphase, which was a technical indoor shooter, and Simulcra, and Nova 9, which I haven't played, we've definitely played Simulcra because we've reviewed that, but Nova 9's another one. Space Crusader, which is apparently like Wing Commander, and Space Crusader AGA, who could forget Star Glider 1 and 2, Warhead that I've mentioned already, fantastic game, Virus of course, you can't remember anything without remembering, you can't forget Virus and of course Wing Commander and the Z-Wolf games that we've reviewed already as well as the Mercenary games don't forget as well. see on this particular try I am trying to avoid the enemies as much as possible and keep them at a distance because if they're firing towards us then they'll fire on target and you'll have to shoot forward very rapidly if you want to avoid them and sometimes just like this it helps to stay directly in the middle and just circle around and around and take on anything that's flying towards us. And 
that's our first life over. We had four and now we're down to three. And we had five friendlies and now we're down to four. And that's not too bad, it's just that all four of them are north, south, east and west, which makes things pretty difficult because it means I'm going to have to go all the way around trying to defend them and the sources take ages and ages to land but you saw on level 2 they don't waste too much time once they start hovering over something so prioritising the sources again is a bit difficult when there are so many of them flying around but if you can wait until they all get onto the same level the same height then you can take them on as a group and take them on all at the same height and that means you can sometimes get passing shots and rebound shots and lucky strikes and it's a great effect when we do hit something and a great sound effect as well because it lets you know that you've actually hit something with a huge clang You might wonder why this game is called Alienator instead of Alienator. Well, that's because when you are on your own, you are isolated. And when you are on your own on a different alien planet, then you are alienated from the rest of society well this is alienator basically we might be even a prisoner and we have to defend ourselves against all of these things as punishment i'm not sure at all but what we do get is us alienated on this enemy planet and that's why it's called alienator instead of alienator and that's why if you type that in you won't find it under alienator those guys are very quick but in this case we managed to divide the enemy before it broke away with our friendlies and when they dive in and move off they have a certain amount of time to get them and once again the sound effects give that away see the radar swarming with enemies and if they aren't anywhere near ours I'm not too bothered but look at that destroying friendlies means we get less score we've got 23,000 score at this point and we'll have to watch out and make sure that we protect those and not get too distracted by all those other guys buzzing around because it's only the sources that we'll have to bother about and I think well that's another life over brings us down to one, so we've got one life left. That's the sorcerers out of the way, we'll just have to keep an eye on that just to see if the enemy launches any more, but now it's just the fighters to go. So anybody who likes Defender and wants it a 3D Defender, this game is amazing, you can play it on the mouse or the joystick, and you can see by the time you get to this level, with these things flying around, it becomes a joy, and it becomes one of those games that you do remember once you've played it. Yo, 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 yo,
Here we are on level 13. And if you thought the other ones were hard, maybe this one is even harder. Well, ships ramming us at point blank range doesn't really help. And they can do that, that's why it's best to stay on the move in this game at top speed. And you can see I'm moving at zero speed at the moment. So I think this game has got a lot going for it. It's public domain, but it's not public domain quality necessarily. I would have happily paid $9.99 for this title. You can see the 3D is amazing. It's very fast and smooth. And an updated version of this game wouldn't go amiss on any platform, even today. For a 1991 game, yes, 30 years old, it still holds up, and it holds up just as good as ever. Look at that, another enemy stealing away our guys. Let's see if we can do it again. And yes, we managed to do it, that's a tremendous feeling. And so, let's pile into those enemies as quick as you can, because at this stage, we cannot hang around on the level. You have to rush from one side of it to the other, looking around frantically, trying to get those enemies. Otherwise, they will make mincemeat out of us. You can see they're ganging up now on one side or another. I'm going to have to fly, fire, fire until I know which way to travel, and then dive down as quickly as possible. Looks like one enemy's got lost and by firing around in a circle, there it is. And it's a pity that this game doesn't have a compass on it, so they have to fire around using that radar. This game was not reviewed in any magazines, or at least no favourable ones. It was reviewed, of course, in Amiga Joker, with it being a German magazine, and they gave it a massive 52%. And I can't imagine what they complained about compared to Epic and all the other very slow games that we got 3D on the Amiga. But this is very fast and playable, and what can you expect for the price of a covered disc? Well, nothing, but this is what we got. This is fantastic. It's better than Crazy Sue, which was also given away for free. And so the only other score that we can fall back on is the Lemon Amiga score. They gave this a majority of 80%, which means the average is 6.5 out of 10. <laughs> And that's level 14. This is getting on to be very difficult now. Look at that enemy piling towards us, firing, firing. And that's another death, but apparently this ADF that I'm using, or WHD load, whatever, has broken. You can see live zero. And that means that the game is broken and it's given me infinite lives on this level, which took out my motivation to play it. So what I did was completed level 14 and then after that I messed about on level 15 knowing that the game had crashed and given me unlimited lives. I don't like to play with unlimited lives because this review should have ended by now but that's why I'm only going to continue for another level. It is a hidden gem. It's not the only hidden gem that we haven't seen yet. Certainly not the only hidden 3D gem that we haven't seen yet but that's maybe for season six. For now, I'm glad if some of you guys enjoyed this footage of this great game. It's very simple and it's basically Defender. 
But you can see, well, what I decided to do on level 15 was to crash inside the mothership, and because this is an Amiga 1200, it glitched a bit before I crashed into it. Let's also check out that skull! So, yeah, I do love the title music, I do love everything about this game. It's got charm, and it's got versatility, I wish it had passwords so that people could skip levels and use this like a space adventure and not have to sit here for three hours expecting to complete it. And so, apart from those niggles, it's got everything you'd expect plus more, and if it wasn't for the fact that you don't get power-ups or anything like that, this could have been a full price commercial title. When you die, also you lose your high scores on the high score table. So it does have a few downsides, but I have a very soft spot for this game, and it's one of those games, a classic, that nobody's ever heard of on the Amiga. Thank you.